Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Light Movement. So this is episode 15 of season two, and we're going to be talking today about, gosh, I am blanking, uh, and How I'm blanking live on you. <laughs> be an outstanding artist. That's right, we're blanking. <laughs> We're not talking about if the earth is flat. Okay, yeah, that's that's what we were talking about before, though. So uh, that's why my <laughs> mind is flat right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're talking today about how to be an outstanding artist. Uh, and we actually had this fantastic suggestion uh, in last week's podcast, which was how to find inspiration as an artist. Um, and I can't remember her name, but somebody suggested it in the chat, and it was fantastic. And we loved it, so we're going with it. Uh, so... As always, there's a live chat with this podcast. Uh, if you guys have any questions, we're going to be doing a Q&A at the end of this podcast. Uh, so we love answering your guys' questions. You guys always have fantastic questions. Um, and last week's podcast was really interesting because Ellie sort of had this really, um, dare I say, enlightening idea that you just live your whole life as an artist rather than like, only when you're painting. Uh, and so if you want to sort of learn more about that, go check out that podcast um, by clicking on our channel. But this week, we are going to be talking about how to be an outstanding artist. So first, as always, we're going to be doing a, a right brain challenge, which is going to be a lot of fun. And this time, we're going to be doing the same right brain challenge as we did, uh, I think, three weeks ago, which first, is... Yeah, the first Or, week. yeah, maybe it was a month ago. I don't mm -hmm. know. Time flies. But... Um, <laughs> we're going to be drawing each other's faces. Uh, and so I'll be drawing Dimitra uh, from a profile. Dimitra will be drawing Ellie and Ellie will be drawing me. Am I a profile? Yeah. <laughs> so without um, looking at our paper, without looking at our paper. Yes. And you cannot pick up your pencil. Mm -hmm. A one line drawing. Yeah. And so, uh, but we're going to be doing this over the course of a few, um, a few of the, we're going to be doing this for like four or five podcasts in a row. And then the winner is going to get a prize, and we haven't thought of a prize yet, but we're open to suggestions. So <laughs> if you guys have any ideas, let us know in the chat. So let's do – how Can long I should do we this? do this for? Two minutes? What? You, th you guys think two minutes is good? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, All two right. minutes. Okay, two minutes. Wait, this is a three-quarter view. Starting – can you pull your hair back? <laughs> there we go. Okay, two minutes starting now. Oh, this is very, very hard. Oh, no. I forgot where I was. This is going to be really, really bad. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm, like, trying so hard to focus. It's Jake, don't look at my paper. I'm not. I'm just trying to draw the shadows in. Did you just look at your no, paper? I oh, I fingers. saw her look down. No, I, I, <laughs> my pen was stuck on the microphone. Uh, oh. oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. All right. <laughs> I think it'll be evident um, when you see mine that I did not look. I picked up my pencil a few times. I actually haven't. There's going to be like all these different uh, lines connecting them. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> this is going to be really bad. I need this practice. I'm already done. I'm just not gonna look. Oh Lord! Oh guys, <laughs> come on! You're supposed to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, that's not a face. <laughs> no, it's good. Okay, I okay. guess we didn't need I, two minutes. I Mine was actually the coolest, I think, out of your both of you. I don't know. Well, look at I have two faces going on. I have this one, <laughs> and then this one. <laughs> You look like Jesus there. Yeah, I kind of have the same thing, except... <laughs> I don't even know what what happened at all. I, like, tried to start with the whole, like, outer contours of her face, and I think it's okay, 
And then I tried to like keep my pencil on and work my way back up doing shadows. That makes it harder if you can't lift your pencil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, look at this one. This is really funny. So I started up here. This is the top of his. Oh, you got to show this. Oh. Yeah, show this. I one. started up here, and this is like the top of his head. And then the eye and the nose and the mouth, that's all going good. And then the chin, which is a little bit big. Oh, yeah. And then I, I worked my way up to the head, which is a misstep because it should have been up hey, there. It actually is pretty cool, honestly. Yeah. yeah it's like one of those one really line drawings that's on, it's like trendy. Mine looks <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. That doesn't look anything like me. <laughs> Super original. Which brings us to. <laughs> so how are we voting on these? Yeah, let's uh let's have a vote. Okay. Um, just on YouTube, I guess, on the count of three, one, two, three, say who your favorite person Hold yours was. Up. Yeah. And uh, in a minute, I'll check. <laughs> you can vote for Clearly. me. Don't don't worry about Mine's offending them. It's okay. This if you were really to hang one on your wall, what would you want to put on? You your would wall? hang this on your wall. Don't it's you want Demetra on your wall? I mean, it's <laughs> us. <laughs> Dimitra with the severe overbite. <laughs> oh my goodness. She's like this. <laughs> I'm glad you drew like long, luscious hair. <laughs> it's cool. Yep. Points for hair, guys. I don't Come know on. about flat earth, but you definitely have a flat head. <laughs> okay. All right. Who won? <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I'll have to go on YouTube real quick. Um, in the meantime, while I go find out who won... Let's start off with the first question of the theme for the podcast. Um, and so I guess with um, how to be an outstanding artist, I mean, there's so many different facets of this. Um, I think that a lot of people, when they think of an artist that stands out, though, is like someone who's original. So do you guys think that originality exists? I think a lot of people that saw us post about this podcast thought we were going to talk about how can they get on the outstanding artist show really maybe <laughs> yeah because i got a few oh, no. <laughs> i have a few people that contacted me about that and i know dahlia had somebody contact her about that hmm. interesting what do you guys think about, about the question the though? question though? Um, <laughs> i think that it has a complex answer and um I don't think there's really such thing as an original thought. I think the most compelling like artwork that really or ideas that stand out to you and you see someone doing that and you think it's original, it's just what every thought comes from. It's derived from several other thoughts and that's stuff that you pick up around you or things that inspire you. So being a creative person and an artist, like you pay attention to all these things, you notice all these things and to have something original it's just made up of several little things that you um, gravitate towards and then it builds up to one thought or one idea um, or one vision for your painting so I think the more sources that you can be inspired from the more original original your art will be so if people I mean there's a lot of art that's like it you just pass by and you're like eh it's not that cool I've seen that before because that art like it's it's not combined of several ideas it's just they're repeating one or two ideas from mm -hmm. someone else and so it's copying that artist it's not their original idea but still we call it original but it's just one it's just an idea that's built from several other things that you can't trace it back to because it's from so many different things mm -hmm. hmm. do you have a different answer yeah I don't know if I agree. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, th so this is where my thoughts are at. Is uh, I think one of the important things to think about is like what do you believe about creation mm -hmm. in general? And so if you believe there is a sort of um, supreme creator out there that's created everything um, and that creates out of nothing, mm -hmm and isn't sort of derivative is is capable of like i mean just think about our w natural world and all the different diversity in animals and and uh even just on a you know micro level of the beauty and the the ingenuity and the innovation and the creative creativity of that and and 
And the fact that new things happen all the time sort of proves that you can have original thought. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would live in a vacuum, right? Mm -hmm. But sort of our div diverse, gorgeous world is evidence that original creativity does exist. Original thought does exist. So if, if let's say, God can create out of nothing and create something brand new, then I believe we can too because we are created by God and – in the image of and them, yeah. yeah, and it, whatever, uh, it, it might um, it might mean that we have to partner or tap into God <coughs> in order to do it, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where I'm at. Is like, I think that you can create things that are derivative, and the less derivative they are, and the more original they are, is going to be tapping into something very divine mm -hmm. in order to pull that off. Otherwise, I, I don't know that by ourselves, as just simply humans without any divinity can do it. Yeah, I'm not I, sure about that. I but agree I, with that. But, mm -hmm. And I think that we need starting points, and that's where uh, being inspired by other creations mm -hmm. as a beginning point. But then, it's so to me, it's a continuum. It's one big, long, creative continuum, and we're like nodes on that continuum. Mm -hmm of creation and the way to like push the envelope as you always say or really stand out is to try to like tap into that divine creativity so that you have more original ideas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um i definitely changed my perspective i was just thinking i was thinking of the book steal like an artist and he talks a lot about all this and what's or what's an original painting or what's an original thought and so in a worldly sense of just, yeah, like starting somewhere and just trying to think of something that's going to stand out, like if you're trying to think of stuff, you can't just look at a couple things, be inspired from that and try to create something that's you. It won't be you. It'll be it'll look derivative of other things. So you have to just find lots of different sources and that in itself will stand out. So that book, Steal Like an Artist, Austin Kleon, uh, he says in there um that when you are stealing like an artist not just stealing like if you're just stealing and you're mm -hmm. basically um copying something that's already out there one plus one equals two but if you steal like an artist one plus one equals three sort of like um, um, a mom and a dad have a child that child is uniquely its own person mm -hmm. that's an example of one plus one equals three not one plus one equals two mm -hmm. so the magic I would say that the magic of one plus one equaling three, which mm -hmm. is outside of the normal order of things, right? That's a that's a miracle. How can one plus one equal three? Yeah. So uh, that is where the divinity comes in. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of artists that are creating one plus one equals two mm -hmm. or just one plus one is one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. like it's like, wow, that's a copy. Like you just copied that person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think that how far you are from from that, um, you know, how much you engage, you know, God or, or the divine is, I think, going to be, you know, something that uh, determines the originality. Hmm. Also, I mean, we've talked about this before, but painting from your dreams can be a very an like in a very original, special, unique thing because mm -hmm. like you don't think of your own dreams, they come to you. And where are they coming from? It's like, I believe they come from God, so when he gives me dreams and I paint them, it feels like that's really special and original because mm -hmm. no one else will have that dream. Mm -hmm. So do you guys think that someone has to be original in order to be an outstanding artist? Mm -hmm. I, I, I do. I mean, it depends on also who's, who's making the judgment of what's, of what's outstanding. And also, mm -hmm. yeah, what's, what's because, original. <laughs> well, because I, I had an experience <coughs> in, in Ukraine. I mean, I used to go, um, and I plan to go back, but, you know, just because of the way the world's been going, I, I haven't been in, in a couple of years. But um, I used to go to Ukraine every year for, I think, eight years straight, and I taught at um, the art institutes there um, on a volunteer basis. And uh, the students were so hungry to express themselves and to be original and to to uh paint something you know straight from them but they were conditioned and told in their school 
in their academia to copy the masters. So how they learn is through copying the masters. And so copying in certain cultures isn't considered um, uh, wrong mm -hmm. or less than. Mm -hmm. It's actually something that like, it's so celebrated, to be yeah. an outstanding artist in academia Ukraine is to not be able to tell the difference between one of their Russian masters and, you know, and and the student. It's like the opposite of originality. It's the opposite. So, yeah. uh, and I know there's a lot of cultures around the world where like copying another person is not actually wrong or messed up. Here in the United States and in a lot of Western individual, because we believe in individualism and- Freedom. E and e exceptional, being exceptional at something. Um, there's some cultures uh, where to be exceptional is prideful, you know, and, and you're supposed to blend in and, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I think that in, in our culture, we esteem originality, and that's not always esteemed. And I think, you know, that in some cultures it's not. That makes mm -hmm. sense. And so I don't, I don't know, because I don't live in that culture, so I don't, I don't know. I, I value originality, and I feel like it comes from engaging with the divine. It comes from uh, creating from that right brain uh, place. That's why we always do these right brain yeah, exercises. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because that's how you can engage that divine space. Um, that's, I think, you know, the realm where God lives is when you're not uh, being analytical and your ego, when you're in your right brain, your ego like somehow disappears, it goes away. Like you don't, you don't have this consciousness of self so much. And so I think that that's why artists love, why creating is so addictive because you, you take this vacation from yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's almost counterintuitive that to be outstanding, to be original, you almost have to die to self. Yeah. S let your ego kind of chill and grab hold of that divine hand and co-create. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so ironic because ironic, so many yeah. people are taught that like being an artist is narcissistic, you mm -hmm. know, that it only like the only reason you would want to create is to celebrate yourself, but right. it's so far from the truth. It's really. so far from the truth. It's the exact opposite of the Cre truth. Yeah, creating is is actually being a servant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Eliz I love Elizabeth Gilbert. She um, you know, she's a writer that wrote Eat Pray Love and Big um, magic too, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so. she, um, in her she, I, in her TED talk, um, can't remember the title, but it's really great if you want to look it up. Mm -hmm. um, she talks about uh, the muse and how from the Renaissance until you know recently, it was it was celebrated or thought of that uh, when man became the sum of all things in the Renaissance instead of before that God was the sum of all things. But then in the Renaissance, man became the sum of all things. And what that did is it transitioned the genius to be the artist. The artist was the genius. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the outstanding exceptionality came from the artist. So it put all this pressure and you know, stress on the artist to be amazing. Um, and, and what we realize and what we know is long before that, you know, the ancient Greeks, you know, they thought the muse existed outside of of the artist and you tap into the muse to create something great. And I think we're moving back to that. I think that there's a, you know, a consciousness today of spirituality. People are hungry for it. People are openly talking about it. Yeah. Um, it's wild because even like five, ten years ago, it was like nobody talked about it really. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't like nobody talked about it, but on like a public level, you know? Yeah. And I think people are moving out of um, like religiosity mm -hmm. and into spiritual and relationship and so and community. And so I think what that does is it opens up the conversation to a uh, more inclusive discussion. And mm -hmm. so anyway, I, I think that spirituality and art have always been closely linked together. Mm -hmm. And I think that in order to be original or, um, and, and then you got to think about, well, what's the desire? Why do we desire to be original? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like independence, you know, it's like, it's to be outstanding, you know, to be, um, set apart. Yeah. To be set apart 
to but at the same time it's so ironic because everybody wants to be part of a community too it's you like know? you're you're trying to be your best self mm -hmm. and so like coming up with original ideas that come from god it's like you only you like everyone who taps into that is it's going to come out differently like if you truly live that way and paint that way it's going to be the best mm -hmm. that you can do and it's going to be like like no one else will be able to do that or copy that because and that's the cool thing if everyone did that every single person would be an outstanding artist hmm. well for me i see it at least this could just be my experience but i see it in my own life as um a progression of sorts and as I've just grown and, and, you know, grown up and, you know, I started being a professional artist when I was 25, 20, no, 23, 23, I was 23 years mm -hmm. old when I started to be a professional artist. And uh, my perception at that point was really much more egocentric. And I, I, I wanted to be original and outstanding to set, be set apart, to be recognized. It came from this desire oh, to- Oh, like outside yourself kind of. Yeah, like, like to people please almost. Yeah, to people please or like it was for the crowd or, or to get mm -hmm. accolades or to be recognized mm -hmm. or uh, I, I think it was very much driven by that, you mm -hmm. know, the desire to be original. And as I've sort of changed and grown mm -hmm. and, and morphed over the years, now my desire to to why I seek originality or I, I push the envelope, the desire to push the envelope is is really to find God. It's like it's like if I can touch it, if if I know, you know, you can see it with writing so much, you mm -hmm. know, when you write. Oh, totally. And yeah. it just flows. Yeah. And like, you're like, whoa, that's not me. Yeah, I know that's not me. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. And it's the same thing with painting. You, you're you like, it's so reassuring. It's mm -hmm. so out of this world. Fantastic. Yeah. The best Feels feeling so on good. earth mm -hmm. when you know you're you're it's like. It's like, to me, I equate it to like surfing. It's like you're riding this wave effortlessly <laughs> and it all just, and then you sort of wake up from the dream and go, whoa, I painted that? No way. Yeah. God's yeah. real. God's real. You know, and mm -hmm. even yeah. if you believe in yeah. God and you believe God's real, to have uh, that assurance, encounter, that yeah. encounter, that moment where you're, where you've touched that divine thing. And that's what's become so addictive to me and so powerful Same. Mm -hmm. and that's what i i long for that's what i want i think every artist who, yeah. who knows they've touched it and every artist i think has yeah um then it's like you you're you're always chasing a deeper experience mm -hmm. with that you know and that's why it hurts so bad when you make a bad painting <laughs> and you're yeah. like man that one's terrible and you didn't know, make it <laughs> where were you god you yeah. know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah where was I that I couldn't hear you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it. That's why it's so crushing because it's illogical, mm -hmm. right? Why? Why have I seen so many grown? I never women, thought about it that why way. Why have so many grown women sense. cried? You know, at a bad painting. You know, I've I've seen that so many times in classes where they're in pieces, just crying and crying because they can't get it right, and it's like it's just a bad painting. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Gosh, a lot of different questions were answered that I had. <laughs> I know, <laughs> we kind of like went. Maybe we can talk specifically how to create art. Yeah, so that's sort of where I was going to go with the next question is like what, um, like obviously you have to set yourself up in order to, like like God doesn't want to just, well, I don't want to say exactly what God wants or doesn't want to do because, you know, he's extremely multifaceted. Whenever you, want, whenever you try to box him, he's like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think that he loves and likes to reward people who try to position themselves, you know, who are ready to receive that, that um, divine touch, you know. So I guess how, my question is how do you position yourself better to – be in a place where you are mm. more in communion with question. God while you're painting, you know, like aside from just being in the right brain. Yeah. Um, like you guys think like, I mean, obviously skill plays a big part, you know, I think yeah, working having... hard and showing up all the time mm -hmm. that plays a big part. Definitely. But what are, I guess, what are some of the skills that you can acquire? Mm -hmm. That well, I don't know. Is okay. it too, it's too complicated no, a it's question. A <laughs> I have part of an answer. I don't know if I'm fully answering that specifically about skills, mm -hmm. but I think um, a key is like laying down your own 
like ego and thoughts and ideas and like thinking like oh if I make this painting it's going to get this result or this like reaction or yeah, I know reaction. it's going to mean this thing like you have a certain message you want to give people and so it's all like calculated like to me that takes a lot of the magic out of it mm -hmm. but at the same on the other hand like at the same time you can also think like no matter what you're painting it's how you paint it and like god can be in the way that you lay down a brush stroke doesn't even matter the image too but i don't know like you have to i just think overall you gotta like for it to be a really special like moving piece you have you can't preemptively think and decide it's going to be that way and like think that you know how to do it yourself like you just can't you have to just mm. realize like like in, be in the moment with it and whatever you're feeling or feel led to do trust it and just have trust that's going to work out instead of getting worried about what the result will be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how do you think that factors in with like making decorative art because you're trying to sort of make an, a piece of art for a specific space mm -hmm. you know so people might try to like convey a message mm -hmm. or a feeling with that do you think the that specific Im images if yeah. you are like you know working in the decorative market how would you sort of overcome still be an outstanding artist because you're trying to mold into uh, a what framework. the masses want yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly well i think the knots in the um that's a second question. I don't get to answer the first one. <laughs> you can answer the first, but the second is also mandatory. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll write it down. <laughs> um, as far as like positioning yourself, I, I think that like people have asked me this a lot and I think that personally, and I like with everything, I'm just like, this is just my opinion, <laughs> whatever, you know, like anybody believe whatever they want. But for me, I how I answer that question is, it's like a lot of people think and it's almost like a kind of a religious thing. They almost think like, oh, I need to say a prayer, you know, light some candles, you know, clear the space, uh, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's this uh, this there's a lot of mystique to it. And I think God is totally just laid back, natural, very. um you know, like it's not this spooky, mystical thing. Mm -hmm. I think God's like very down to earth. Mm -hmm. So I I don't think that you have to do anything too terribly special to like, like a ritual be in position. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, in fact, if you try to try too hard, that usually blocks it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. And so I think you just have to basically want it and be open, be a child. I, I think the closest you can mm. become yeah, to a child that's, that's good. is how you are in position and um i think innocence is a big part of it and and i agree with you about like get your ego out of the way kind of be a silhouette mm -hmm. um you know whatever opinions you have about what you want to do and create kind of hold them loosely in yeah. your hand and don't don't uh force or manhandle your painting let your <laughs> painting evolve how it wants um and and i think that 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 gives you a you know, a good place to be in, in position. Um, I think control and, um, ego doubts, I think skills are really important. If you have a lot of skills under your belt and you can just flow in and out of this thing and that thing, and you're not thinking about mixing color, you're not thinking about, you know, how do you render something or what does that look like? Or how do mm -hmm. I pull this off? Um, and, and so that conversation in your head of, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing right you you've gotten to a place in your skills where you're competent and you don't have to think about things mm -hmm. and it's sort of second nature you're fluent in the elements of art yeah and That's therefore really you point. have you have the vocabulary then you you're much more free, free. Mm -hmm. to just kind of not you're you not know, thinking that much yeah so i think that's important and then as far as the decorative art i think that you can still uh even though there's these base parameters uh, whether it's whether it's fine art or decorative art, even when I have a source and I have an idea ahead of time, I I still can um, flow in that sort of divine 
co-creation, even though I have a plan ahead of time. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think you have to just be it's, clueless. Yeah, it's and the way you put down paint. It's the yeah. way you put down paint, or it's the things that happen that you didn't count on. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's so I think in the decorative art, it's the same way. Um, you know, maybe loosely, you're trying to fit into this color palette or or uh, generally a design that's going in the kitchen or whatever. Um, but within that, you can you can do something that nobody's ever done before. Mm-hmm. You can you can uh, take that to a whole new level. Mm-hmm. You can wow somebody, you know, with you know the innovation and just how you did it. You know, I mean, if you look at how many artists have painted bunny rabbits, right? You can go, okay, I've seen that bunny rabbit a million times, and I've seen that bunny, and then you see this bunny rabbit, and you're like, whoa, that is the coolest thing. I've never seen anything like that, you know? And it's like they painted something that people have painted a million times, but they did it in a way mm-hmm. that's sublime. It's just they they had to have touched something divine to pull that off. Mm-hmm. And that bunny rabbit could easily go, you know, in the sewing room <laughs> mm-hmm. or the living room. I don't know. So let's talk a little bit about the elements of art. Um, what What are they first? So that, like, you know, anybody who's watching this who might not know what the elements of art are um, will, like, be able to pick up on the conversation. Do you guys want to say? Yeah. <laughs> is there nine? How many is there? There's a lot. <laughs> I don't know. There's a there's line, color, uh, form, um, texture. Contrast. Value. Oh, value. <laughs> scale. <laughs> Composition? Composition. Definitely. Depth. Oh, depth, yeah. Depth has to be But composition isn't? I feel like it should be. Could be. Maybe composition. We'll just add that in there. I don't know. That's <laughs> it, eight. Uh, there's seven, eight, or nine. There's seven or nine. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> it shape, would make sense if shape. it was, Oh, shape. Shape, shape and one. form are different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those are basically it. You can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so what, if any... Which ones do you think are most often like the contributors to a perceived original piece of art? Does that make sense? Hmm. Well, I think, okay, so we're talking about two different things. One, there's skills, base Mm -hmm. skills that get you to a place of fluency. And I think that value is probably one of the most important things. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people struggle with it. Yeah. And And then when you add color into it, being able to see what color and value um mm-hmm. you know this red is this value this yeah. yellow is this value yeah. um being able to to in black and white it's it's easier to sort of master value but then once you shift into color mm-hmm. you have to see both color and value simultaneously so i think that skill wise mixing colors and rendering form through accurately yeah. <laughs> is usually through value mm-hmm. color and value um so and then there's like proportion i think that that which isn't one of the elements of art but it it it's important so how how long something is to how wide right so general proportion where things are size wise to the other um is i think the next thing or or another thing that's really important as far as skills Mm -hmm. so then when it comes to the elements of art let's say line i think like how how fluent you are in line. Like if you look at John, um, my husband, Freezy, if you look at his his ability for line, it's, you you know, Masterful. every time, yeah. like he's touching something divine there. I'm mm-hmm. looking at your shirt. <laughs> yeah, like he, he has something beyond anybody I've ever seen in terms of line. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and so, but he's, worked at it he's practiced it he's uh gone into his own little world with lines since he's two years old since he's two years old it's almost like through line he has found you know god in in a lot of ways so and it's been a comfort to him over the years it's been you know it's been a a, an escape you know many times in his life so so i think that you know um that's why art is just so I, and I only think artists get it. You know, it's like art is so profound in where it, it meets spirituality because mm-hmm. you you it's like everything's a door there. Everything L- could be line, could be color. Color yeah. is a major door to get there. 
Man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, and to think like there's color that exists that doesn't exist yet. You know what I mean? There's color <laughs> out there. Second. There's color <laughs> out there that's that's a possibility yeah. that hasn't quite been mixed. Mm -hmm. You know, there's color combinations. Color combinations that haven't been mixed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what excites me. Like every time I go to paint, I'm trying to think what kind of palette can I do that like will be different this time or like I'm constantly trying to think about that. Yeah. And then that doesn't even tap into the possibility mm. of new color right, that, that could be created from new materials or an innovative way to uh, process, process yeah. those materials. And, you know, or, or even I as if, if, we, if you believe things are changing and shifting in the earth, that there's light, there's new light that will open up and our eyes, you know, even, even as, our, as we change as humans over the years, what, what can our eyes see? Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much there that, like, is is new and coming and possible and so it's like everything i can think of even just textures like if you think about the the, the nuances of textures that are there um with painting mm -hmm. you know and hmm. and the materials there's so many different materials and they all feel differently they're all tactily different to us mm -hmm. as artists you know both visually and in our hand you know that's why i don't think digital art will ever replace you know the physical mm -hmm. hand hewn art yeah it's been around this long <laughs> so <laughs> ah so many questions <laughs> um maybe we should answer some questions from yeah that's true else. okay i'll go on to on to youtube so you yeah if you guys won. have any questions oh yeah let's go back to who won um we have oh, I'm not. Guess. I'm not caught up. Whoops, I gotta. Okay, so let's see. Demetra didn't get a single vote. Um. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I got two votes. It, it's probably her muse. You always win these. How come? And you win? Ellie got you one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six votes. So wow. does that mean I won? Yeah, yeah I Ellie won. won. So if anybody Mine has like uh, any questions, just let us know in the chat. Um, but it doesn't look like we have any questions <laughs> right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so I guess you could take that as a good sign. Ellie and Dimitri, you guys are answering all the questions. Or, uh, <laughs> we're, or it's, we're super boring. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so if somebody were to start or like if somebody is sort of in a rut and they're feeling like, you know, I like – I just feel like I'm copying other people's stuff mm. or I don't know where to start with becoming original. Where, That's a great question. Where would you recommend mm -hmm. them start to like try to find a place? Because, I mean, based off this conversation, there's so many different places. You know, there's like mm -hmm. color, there's line. You mm -hmm. know, you could study the different elements of art. You could just find a better way of, you know, praying and like connecting yeah. with God. Like there's like all these different ways you could do right brain challenges. But like what would you guys recommend um, – to someone who is in a rut and trying to break out of that and become more outstanding, become more original. I think both of us really like to talk about this. Yeah. But go ahead and help people. Um, I think that the like a simple answer of what I think will work every time is you have to just expose yourself to a lot of art and look at tons of different art. Like just like I don't know, so even spend a few days or weeks doing it. Like go on Pinterest is a great is a really great place to find art. I know that it probably holds the most art out of any other platform. Um so if you're on Pinterest, like start collecting or organizing art that really moves you and speaks to you and just like dig really deep and try to elevate your taste and and choose art that like like, if you just, like, oh, I, like, that's pretty, like, just go deeper and, like, try to find something that just moves you emotionally. And so when once you start finding those pieces of art, like, you can, I don't know, find, like, 20 and, like, gather them all together and find pieces or try to, like, analyze each one and which parts stand out to you. And then just give it a try. Like, try to create something that's a mixture of all that. And eventually it'll be really unique and original and I think that's a good place to start I know mm -hmm. that I started in that place you know I 
and at first my art looked really close to another artist and then I just tr started trying new things and like after probably 50 paintings I don't know trying that process like in the portfolio class how many paintings did we make like 20 16 or? okay so times three whatever um 48 yeah 48 50 <laughs> paintings yeah. yeah then I eventually like found a style that resonated with me and I felt really connected to and then and then that was a starting point to to where I am now so it, you never just arrive at like one original idea and just like that's it it's just you're going to constantly be searching for it mm -hmm. yeah that's good I I think that there's lots of starting points lots of different starting points that will all work and they all kind of lead to that point that you just said um something is going to resonate with you and then that will lead you to the next very important sort of step in this, which is you f you after you identify that and you're kind of solid in that and you've mm -hmm. established that, then you have to push the envelope. Yeah, take it further. After, after you've pushed the envelope, I would say that's where you're starting to be outstanding mm -hmm. or um, exceptional and, and much more original. And a lot of people don't get there. They, they sort of stay in the emulation stage um, or they have a hard time identifying, you know, what resonates with them. And the reason they have a hard time identifying what resonates with them is they don't paint enough. If you don't paint enough, you can't ever get there. You just can't. If you, if you paint uh, off and on, every once in a while, here and there, you just, you just go in circles all the time. You, nothing sticks long enough because you're not, you're not, doing it on a habitual basis where one experience can move into the next and the next and the next because you've already forgotten the previous experience because it happened three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So you, you, it has to be through consistent time behind the paintbrush uh, is, and, and it's reasonable, think about it. How can you say to anyone, can you be an outstanding dentist when you work on teeth you know, three times a year? I mean, no, <laughs> or five hours a week. Mm -mm. You know, are you going to be an outstanding singer if you sing in the shower every other month? I mean, it's n that's not how you become outstanding or mm -hmm. exceptional at anything um, or original. You, you have to put the time in. Mm -hmm. And so painting a lot, and what I mean a lot is any artist, I don't care if you have um, zero skill and you're starting at the very, very beginning bottom, if you just simply commit to painting 40 hours a week for six months straight, at the end of the six months, you you will have found your style, you'll be original, you'll be exceptional. It's like, it's pretty much fail-proof. Yeah. How you get to the point where you can paint that much, that's, that's the real key, a lot of people can't. And so that's where you need tricks or classes or a community or you know something to compel you to do it um and i think the 100 painting challenge is another great way to uh get on the road yeah mm. definitely um, because you can if you do 100 paintings in three days um uh then you so the 100 painting challenge is kind of something that we came up with with the school but uh, basically you do uh 33 paintings a day three days in a row and they're small paintings like this on paper, they're quick, maybe you spend 10 minutes on each one, and uh, by the end of it though, you've, you've uh, really found uh, something that's you there, and, and something will resonate, and it's a pickup point that you can keep going with. Um, and I think, like you said, emulating other artists is another way. I think just um, painting the same subject matter over and over and over, like, I mean, that's what uh, Miranda did is she, she painted tigers over and over and over for, uh, it's over a year now she's been painting tigers and that has caused her to, to push the envelope and to find herself. And, um, and so I think you could pick one subject, you know, it could be uh, portraits of women, it could be dogs, it could be choose one subject matter, flowers, and just paint that for a year. You could probably also do the same with like color, right? Yeah. Like if you just choose one color palette. Yeah. And then you just push that color palette, you know, to its maximum. Like 
yeah. blue and orange, blue and orange, blue and orange, blue and orange. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sort of what I'm trying. To uh, <laughs> Michael, Michael, one of our coaches, that's what he did. Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he had his subject matter. He was a little bit all over the place mm-hmm. in at, at first in his subject matter, but he had this one color palette hmm. of you know that those yellows, oranges, and blues, and it was just over and over and over again that palette. Mm-hmm. And red, yeah. Yeah, and um, and and he he hit it, you know. So there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of doors to the process that you get entry points, but it all is going to lead you to spending a lot of time behind the paintbrush, finding what resonates with you. That's you. You, you just know it when you find it. You're like, that's me. That's nobody else. That's me. And when you find that, um, then you, you go with that for a while until you start to get bored with it. And then that's when you really push the envelope. You just take everything that you're doing and just turn it up a few notches and, you know, go full bore with it. And by that point, you, you've you made it. You're, like, totally original. And you that's the point when you're like, oh, yeah, you know that artist, the one that does, you know, the women with the animals and, mm-hmm. you know, and... Girl and, girl and wolf artist. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's when, you know... You, or star you'll, artists. <laughs> you'll be uh, a trendsetter, not somebody that's following the trends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. How to be a trendsetter. That's what we should have titled this. <laughs> no, that's a good one. We could do a whole other podcast with that. <sighs> okay, so now we have we have some good questions. So uh, Sarmad wants to know, how can one think like a professional artist when starting out? Like, what are the ingredients of daily practice? Um, Great question. I think, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, spending the time painting many, many hours, uh, you know, each week, each day, each week, and painting when you don't feel like it. A professional is going to paint when they don't feel like it. An amateur will paint when they feel like it. So if you want to shift out of a hobbyist to a professional, then you want to paint when you don't feel like it. And it's great to set times like, all right, every day from eight in the morning until two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm free. That's when I'm gonna devote to painting. And just like clockwork, you just clock in at eight o'clock in the morning, you sit there and you paint no matter what, whether you feel like it or not, and you clock out at two o'clock and you're gonna get somewhere. You'll get, you'll, that. and so I think like keeping a schedule, taking it serious, investing in some tools, um, spending the time, investing the time. Uh, if, if, if Try to identify what do you lack. Do you lack skill? Pick up some art classes. Do you lack um, you know, motivation and inspiration? Start collecting a lot of art. Look at a lot of art. Get online. I think just getting your mind on it and, and moving out of any kind of wishful thinking and into action, action mm-hmm. and, and doing is going to be – you know, a big part of, you know, being a professional, being intentional about, you know, what you're doing with your schedule and your week and your day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think having extreme ownership and like personal responsibility too is huge and Mm -hmm. goes right with that too. It's like understanding that you're capable to learn anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's huge. And that's something that a lot of people, I feel like they, they feel like incapacitated or that's just something that they're not naturally good at so they're not capable of doing it you know i think anybody is capable to learn anything nowadays and Mm -hmm. that's i think that's a big part to becoming a professional too you know Mm -hmm. is understanding that no matter what it is that you're challenged by you can figure out a way to learn it Mm Okay, so uh, Marissa Thornberry wants to know, how do you put more of yourself into art? It's hmm. a great question. I guess not fully understanding. Like, like, <clears throat> like I think you can't help it. Mm-hmm. I, I think that... Like your heart into the art? Or yeah, I think that when you... Like when express you, yourself more, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, I think art. when you try too hard... Sometimes it can come across. It's counterintuitive. It'll come across, you know, not genuine. Yeah. Um, because you're you're trying so hard. Mm-hmm. So I think that if you just believe that your everything you touch, everything that you uniquely find beautiful, everything that you um, 
you know, your taste levels, like, yeah, I love that. I want to paint that. Anytime you respond to that inner need, you you are putting yourself in there. Um, and then I think there are some things, which is probably more what she's asking, that you can like more intentionally do without trying too hard. Mm -hmm. And I think that things I've done, I don't know if this is just Ellie's answer or or if this will work for everyone, but what I have done is I've in a, let's say poetic sense, tried to pay attention to my uh, childhood experiences um, or memories or, you know, that, that seem to find, I find those threads and those patterns throughout my life. Um, you know, what animals have I always liked and been attracted to? Um, so I look for symbols. Mm -hmm. um, what are my personal symbols? Um, what, what imagery means something specifically to me? You know, and, um, and, you know, real recently, like just, just like two years ago after painting all these years, like, I, out of nowhere, painted a Pegasus. And I was like, why did I paint a Pegasus? That means nothing to me. And I thought it meant nothing to me. And it's almost like this entire piece of my life was like hidden in a way. And I didn't, I didn't even know it existed until I saw myself paint it. And I'm going, why in the world did I paint that? And then one day it was just like, duh. Like hours and hours and hours of my childhood were spent in my dad's lap while he told me these stories of Greek mythologies. Mm -hmm. And I, it all came back to me. And I remembered in my mind, you know, I was, he would talk about Pegasus and I would ride, I was riding Pegasus and I was, you know, floating through the sky. And it, and so without even trying, I had painted a, per, you know, personal symbols or things that meant things to me that I didn't even know meant to meant something to me. And art has a magical, beautiful way of pulling those things out of mm -hmm. us when we don't even realize it. So I would say just really trust your gut, yeah. you, which you say all the time. Mm -hmm. Just trust your gut and paint what your gut loves and try to make sense of it later. Also, um, going along with that is like, how we we're what we were saying earlier is when you have a lot of skills, you're able to express yourself more freely, and you're not held back by thinking, yeah. "Oh, I want to do this, but I don't really know how, or I'm yeah. worried it's going to turn out yeah. bad." So then you don't do it. So you have like a safe painting, and mm -hmm. it's not really expressing yourself. Right. So once you really know how to paint in all different ways, then you can have the confidence to put those brush strokes down or. Or even make materials. the source that's like more yeah, bold like, and daring. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like maybe there's art you really want to make, but you just think you can't do it. So having the skills will yeah, help you. Yeah, that's there. really good. It's like it's like language, uh, learning a language and vocabulary. Yeah, you know, like totally. you know, I think I know twenty words in Russian, so I'm extremely limited to express myself. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, and, very true. And so like I can't speak with a Russian person, but in Greek I have a way bigger vocabulary. And so I can express myself, but not like English, because I have the full vocabulary in mm -hmm. English, right? So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think it's super cool. Like I was thinking about it earlier, didn't get to mention it, but like, like what you were just saying, what both of you were just saying kind of made me think about like God's really there in the source creating process too. And mm -hmm. like, you know, that's like a huge, that's a huge artistic, um, I mean, if you make sources, you know, a lot of people don't make sources, but even when you're, you know, finding the anything um, that inspires you, it's yeah. like what we were saying last. Um, even week taking a picture <laughs> is <laughs> like being an artist holistically and mm -hmm. not in these compartments. And only when you're doing these tasks, you could be cooking and getting ideas. Yeah. So, yeah. Making your bed. <laughs> <laughs> be an artist when you make your bed, guys. <laughs> or you don't make your bed. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's a bad habit. <laughs> make a, w wake up, make your bed. <laughs> I think there's a book about that. Mm -hmm. There's a book called. There's also a book about uh, successful people have rarely made their bed. What? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, we didn't make our bed. Today. Ellie doesn't make her bed. That's why. <laughs> 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 that's why she's arguing it. I do. I throw. I don't blanket either. Over. Demetra usually makes the bed, and Not it's today. like. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> today our bed's messy. <laughs> It's also usually pointless because Milo will go up there and like tear yeah, up Milo our bed anyway. Yeah, Milo messes so. up our bed every day. <laughs> um, okay, well, with that, this was a great podcast, a lot of fun. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for further or for topics for next week, um, 
we'd love to hear it in the chat. If you like this video, make sure to like it because that's a way for us to know that it resonated with you guys. So um, thanks for joining us this week. Uh, share it with anyone who you think might want to watch it and uh, tune in same time next week. And then shouldn't we also say that like, um, or am I not supposed to? I don't know. <laughs> like, that uh, the Spotify and the SoundCloud and all that are going to have the other podcasts uploaded to it. Yeah. And they can find it on there too. Yeah. So you guys can find the podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. Um, it's going to be on there. There is a bit of a delay for that. So um, I don't want to promise date. 